Welcome here to the Red Eye Nation. No Tune the Underground starts now. Yeah. People are poor and broke and hungry. I don't care what you look like. Yeah. If you're hungry, you're hungry. But how do we feed those hungry people by putting Jetty on those? How do we do by doing our gaming turns? And so make sure Jetty hits that millennial. The video game industry goes. We are live coming to you from the NIGA, the National Indian Gaming Association. That's correct, the National Indian Gaming Association. But you know what's coming, what's new, and with some of my friends and partners and colleagues that came out with us, we're excited to tell you about what happened here. Welcome to Notes from the Underground. Folks, again, welcome to Notes from Underground, Red Eye Nation. We are here and excited to tell you about some of the different conventions and programs that we got to see during this week. And one of the things we got to see this week, and some of my partners are crying that are with me, is we were at the NIGA, which is the National Indian Gaming Association. <laughs> and we got the opportunity to speak not only with um, some of the tribe members and some of the people there that are going to bring in the next generation of programs, games, and entertainment here at the casinos coming up. And you're the inventor of this? I love this guy. No, I love you. No, seriously. They don't know innovation. Yes. Linda, Linda Davies with us. Hi, everybody. We had a great time. <laughs> That's it, Linda. We had a great time, didn't we? No, yes, we did. Linda, we? we did. I learned a lot. Very excited again about gaming, bringing back Miss Pac-Man. Spent more time than I ever thought I would, but I've learned a lot, and I thank you all. Well, we thank you. Wally? Yes, dude. Wally, we've been hanging around for a long time. For you folks, Wally's wrote uh, several books. He knows about education. He knows about um, mathematics, like say to that degree. But Wally, one of the interesting things, the reason I bring that up in, in, in our conversation is the, the changes, the, the generations yeah. that we've seen in the gaming. What did you see that, that stood out to you? Well, what's amazing was when I first started going to Las Vegas, you had those slot machines with uh, the one arm bandit, you'd pull the lever down and the reels would spin and it was mechanical. And now everything is screens, touch screens, video games. And I love seeing the video games converging with the slot machines. So now you can play uh, Missile Command, uh, Pac-Man, Tempest, all of these older games, Cut the Rope, eat the newer ones, uh, Candy Crush, and you can win money based on your skills on playing these games. So it's like an arcade, but it's in the casino. And Juan, and you see that, like Linda, you were saying, you played Pac-Man, right? Obviously <laughs> grew up on these games. When you see Pac-Man now as a casino game, how did you feel seeing that? And how did you play, obviously you played it for a little bit, how was it? It was great, it brought back tons of memories. I haven't even thought about Pac-Man for years and all of a sudden I'm sitting there for hours. So it's very educational, very fun. I suggest everybody get involved. It's really good for your brain, keep you young, stop the dementia, stop the Alzheimer's, get yourself involved, it's fun. Do it by yourself, do it with a group. Miss Pac-Man is fun, they did have over there the one and only in the world Pac-Man game for four players. very cool to play that. I was killed immediately. <laughs> but there's more chances to play today, so I'm still excited about it. And Miss Pac-Man rules. Frogger was there. Some of the real old ones, so really had us all talking. If it feels like heaven to you, I'ma give it to you just how you like. 
I'm enjoying this moment with you. You gotta live it up in your life. And if it feels like heaven to you, I'ma give it to you just how you like. I'm enjoying this time with you. You gotta live it up in your life. And the only thing they're doing is sitting there and pressing the button. Pressing the button and spinning the reels, pressing the button, spinning the reels, and it's passive. And so when you have these video games, you feel like you have more control. You're playing basketball and you can find when to take the shot, a way to take the shot at a different angle. When you're playing these fighting games, you can kick, you can punch, you can jump, you can back off, but you have control and you have a chance to win money which is gives the added incentive to play these video games. And uh, like Linda said, you walk into these casinos now, it's like the old arcades in the shopping malls in the 80s, where you could play you know, Terminator, or you could play these fighting games, or like Street Fighter type games. And you could choose the different characters and they all have different strengths. So now there's more strategy. It's not just hitting a button and watching reels spin around and around trying to get three cherries or three bars right, or whatever. Right, right, right. It, it, it's a video game with characters that you can Remember you're not... <laughs> not just hitting a button and watching wheels spin around and around trying to get three cherries or three bars or whatever. It, it, it's a video game with characters that we, we're playing a driving game. And driving game? A driving game. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But yeah, you're and, and you, you, you're sitting in a chair and you're driving, you brake, accelerator, steering wheel, and you're moving around this track, you're hitting coins to win more money. So not only getting points, but you're getting money. The, the, the funny thing is, it's, it's not like a reinvention of the wheel, right. more than just saying, hey, we're just changing the way the game is being played and really appealing back to our generations, as we were saying, that grew up in the gaming industry. They grew up in the arcades at the time. Right? right, right. So I'm going to tell you, as we speak about this, Wally, we're going to talk and, and, and get a chance to see in our clip that we got a chance to interview Blaine yeah. uh, Great Voice and his uh, game code company and showing you guys the next generation in video games. And we also later on get a chance and opportunity to play some of the new games and show you what Blaine has in store for us here. Well, I'm excited to be here because I look at the, the video games you have here, Blaine, and this is the next generation because younger people don't want to just sit there in a casino with a slot machine and hit a button and watch reels spin around and go, oh, look, three cherries. <laughs> but you know, they want excitement, so can you explain? how the video game industry is merging with the casino industry. Absolutely, and thanks for having me. It's really exciting to share what we're doing at GameCo. We call it video game gambling, and we look at it as a way to combine the fun and interactivity of video games with the thrill and excitement of casino gaming. I started out in film and TV, and I've been producing video games for about 20 years, esports for about a decade, and in 2012 and 2013 started to get the idea to combine video games and gambling. I think that casinos are awesome, and I do think slot machines are really exciting as well, but there's definitely an opportunity for a new category and type of games in the casino that appeal to audiences that grew up playing video games on their console, social, mobile, PC experiences. And so that's what we're doing here at GameCo. So the video games are based on skill. So how do you measure just the skill versus the, the risk? I mean, so the casino obviously wants to make money, but the player's skill can defeat that. So how do you balance that, the risk and the reward for the casino and the players? That, that's a great question, Wally. And uh, it's probably the question we get the most is, how does the best player not win all the money? Right. Yeah. 
We have a patent at the core of our platform that I created when we launched GameCo along with some great mathematicians that we work with. And there are a few different ways that we do it, but ultimately the games are what we would refer to as hybrid games. There are chance elements to the game as well as predominant skill factors in the game. So take an example like our nothing but net game that we'll play later. In Nothing But Net 2, the way that the game works is the uh, player has to catch the ball to make a wager, and at the moment they do that, a random number generator, or RNG, runs. And the RNG is, is deciding how much that shot is worth. It could be worth up to 250 times their bet, or it could be worth what we call tokens, which are an in-game economy that we've created that lets you win money in other areas in the game. Then the player makes the shot. If they make the shot, they win whatever the award is. The catching portion and the shooting portion are both pure skill actions. There's a meter that we'll see on screen. If I press the button when the meter's in the green, I do a good catch and a good shot, I'm gonna make the basket and win the award but the award is going to be worth a different amount depending on the random number generator. If you balance that out over thousands or tens of thousands of plays, what's going to happen is the theoretical return and the actual return of the game are going to converge towards the target that the casino is set, typically in the range of an 8 to 5% hold on the game. So they're holding roughly 8 to 5% of the wagers over tens of thousands of bets on the game. We have some games that work a little bit differently, but that's the general algorithm that we're using underlying the games. So like, when people come to these video games and they don't know if they've seen it the first time, and now they're hesitant, how do you entice them to play for the first time? That's a great question. Also, you have great questions. So it's definitely a challenge that we've seen. First the discovery and then the trial. And I remember when we first launched, we would often see people sort of standing, staring at the game, afraid to put money into it. Uh, so we do a number of merchandising and marketing things. We have attract modes and videos that explain the game. But something that we launched last year has been a real success for us, which is we launched free trial versions of the games at the casino. And I'll show you this later on Nothing But Net 2 as well. So when I walk up to the game before I even put money into it, if I touch the screen anywhere, there's a big prominent button that says free tutorial. And I can play a free version of the game that I can learn how to play and learn the game mechanics. And then when I'm done, it asks me to fund the game. Later this year, we'll also launch <laughs> online versions of our games. So you'll be able to play these games in social casino and real money casinos online as well. Can those casinos be throughout just the casino itself or maybe tied into other uh, casinos off, uh, off, off site? Yeah, so it will be online on desktop and mobile and you'll be able to play these games. Right now for real money gaming, it's limited to a few states in North America, uh, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware, Nevada, but it's launching in other states in the U.S but it's widely available in Europe, Asia, Canada, and other jurisdictions as well. So these will be versions of our game built in HTML5 that you can play on your phone or desktop computer. You can't make that up. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you, Blaine, what made you decide the games that you've chosen right now to start off as your, your initial launch for game mode? That's a great question. So we think a lot about our catalog of games this year we'll release about 12 games, and we think a lot about the alignment of video game genres and themes with the audience or demographic. So typically what we would uh, align with are casual games like our Match 3, Mystery of the Secret Temple, is often going to have an older audience similar to people who play Candy Crush or Bejeweled and other puzzle games. Something like Nothing But Net 2 in the video game industry, we would call it a mid-core game. Racing and sports games, typically as an audience, let's say 35 to 40 years old, mixed male-female uh, gender. And then a game like Soul Calibur, which we're launching later this year, 
has a much younger, typically male audience, but still a male-female mix of players as well. And what we like to say is we give the casinos the ability to merchandise and program their floor for the customer they have today and the customer they want to attract for the future as well. So this year, about eight of our 12 games will be casual, three will be mid-core, two will be core, a fighting game and an action game. What have been your favorite game? Well, we're, we're really... I'm uh, talking, we're growing up. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah you're growing up. What game did you so I, I grew up, I was an Atari kid. Uh, I loved Atari. I spent every weekend at the arcade. And I love fighting games. And as it turns out, Soul Calibur 2 is my favorite fighting game of all time. And we're so thankful to have our partnership with Bandai Namco and be bringing Soul Calibur to casinos. And that was a real uh, coincidence in terms of the ability to work with Bandai, the choice collectively to bring Soul Calibur 2 to the casino, and the fact that it is my favorite game of all time. <laughs> so I'm really happy about that. <laughs>《Hands》is a company of highly talented massage therapists. Everybody's very, very good at what they do, and we travel all over Southern California. The other part that really separates us is the staff. I've personally been in the spa business for about 20 years. I've been doing massage for over 15 of those. Everybody that works with me has had to give me a massage, so I know firsthand their techniques, uh, where they really shine. So if somebody calls me looking for something specific, I know which therapist to set them up with. Right now we have about 15 on staff. When you hire us for a massage, uh, you can expect that we're going to show up on time. We're going to bring all the equipment. We're going to make you as comfortable as possible in your own space and you're going to get a great massage and you're going to feel better afterwards. in video games causes violence in real life. I think that gamers and people in general are able to uh, separate those two. But it is something that we are very thoughtful about. And early on at GameCo, we created a very simple rule, which is no killing people or animals. So we do have games like Soul Calibur, where you are fighting against each other, but in that case, it's done in a fantasy world. It doesn't have the realism of happening in the actual uh, real world. Later this year, we're bringing Terminator 2 to uh, casinos, but again, in that, we've been very thoughtful of how we uh, create the action elements of the game so that we are uh, living up to our promise of responsible gaming. We have great licensed brands coming this year, Star Trek, Vikings the TV show, Soul Calibur, Terminator 2, Mission Impossible. So first is how we make the games, which is very unique in our industry. We are what we would call ourselves an open platform for casino gaming. I like to say we're sort of the Xbox or App Store for the casino. We have a game development kit, or GDK, that has an application programming interface, API. And game developers like Bandai Namco, and we have developers all over the world making games for our platform, are able to interface with our GDK and put their games on our platform. Then we handle the licensing, compliance, manufacturing, distribution, installation, and marketing in relationship with the casino. Hello 
what, Wally Wong, I'm here with Blaine, we're with Gameco, and he's going to be explaining this video game. This is one of our newest games, it's called Mystery of the Secret Temple, and it's what we would refer to as a match three game, similar to Candy Crush or Bejeweled. The way the game works is very straightforward. The player is able to choose how much they want to bet, and these bet amounts are very similar to what you would see in a slot machine. Right. So you control how much you want to risk. Exactly. And I'm making a $1 bet, I just want $1.56. So it's really straightforward for the players in terms of the experience. You need to have a certain betting velocity or pace of play, first for the casino to make as much money as they want to, but also the engagement and thrill for the player. You want to always be a minute or two or a few seconds away from having a big win. Right. I can be conservative, I can be risky, I can blow things up. Exactly. So there are progressives in the game where we can win larger amounts of money as we're going through. And now we're back into the next level of the game. And again, as we make matches, to your point earlier, if we want to wager more, I'm now yeah. betting $10 on every match I make, and I'm going to have bigger win amounts as well. Candy Crush, Jewel. Easy to play easy and to easy play. to understand, and then a lot of strategy and well, challenge right. as you get into it. And you control your money, and you can have fun, instant win, instant play. Gamble playing video I games. I, I love it. This awesome. is great. Thank you. Thank you. Let's take a look at another game. newest games it's called nothing but net 2 and we were talking earlier about how do you get people to trial the game in this case you can play for free before you've even funded it so why don't you go ahead and give it a shot so you can go ahead and uh, use the button here to play the game so it's really simple you want to press the button to catch when it's in the green it's going to tell you how much you can win and then you're going to press the button again when it's in the green. You missed that one. You're going to need to get a little bit better here, Dan. Yes, sir. So now you know how to play the game. You're going to get five free shots to play so that before you've even funded the game, you know how to play. So catch and shoot. Bang, you got it now. Oh, I'm almost done. Come on, girls. Do it too quick. <laughs> this is awesome. So it's a really easy to understand game mechanic, very popular in other sports games, and now you're able to play it in the casino for real money. So now after you've uh, taken your practice shots, you're gonna get a chance to play for real. Oh, Give you a thousand dollars, you ready? Yes sir, get two thousand. So here you can pick how much you wanna bet. I'd bet five bucks, because we gave you a thousand dollars to get started, you got it? Now go ahead and play. So you'll get to that as you play the game. So now the way the game works is you're betting $5 on every bet. In this case, you have $7.50 that you could have won. You missed that shot, so you're going to need to do a little bit better. <laughs> That's how it works. And with the tokens, like what do you can use the tokens to buy products? Or? So I'll show you a few examples of that as we go. You have uh, six tokens now. If I spend 15 tokens, I can shoot for free to win that money back. Oh, so there are all these different awesome. things you can use the tokens for. This is Soul Calibur 2 Casino Edition, and it's the first AAA video game for casinos. In the video game industry, we refer to AAA as the top tier of video games, and it's made by a company called Bandai Namco in Japan, who's collaborated with over the last year to build a version for casinos. And what's really cool about this game is it's the exact same game and experience you would play on your PC or Xbox or in the arcade. Oh, 
Nathan Liu from Mongol Tribe. You can find us at mongoltribe.org and on Instagram and Facebook at Mongol Tribe. And you're listening to Notes from the Underground. For me, this is really about community. It's not only am I creating community in an environmental, ecological sense, but I'm creating community you know, in my human family. And that connection to each other, the connection to culture, it's, it's rooted in food. We're not separate from nature. You know, that's a new concept. That's a, that's a, you know, that's a very Western concept. So that connection to nature is rooted in all of our, our, our native traditions. You know, where, where does our food come from? Where, where do we come from? How are we connected? And the more we have a relationship with that uh, genetic relationship, then we start to understand why we eat certain foods, and why certain foods nourish us more than others. So Don't bite me! I didn't do none! I didn't do none! Look at <laughs> Folks, love animals! Mm -hmm. They're beautiful, they're sweet. And these are all pets, you know, they're all for, these for folks to have folks. as companions, you know? They're really oh, sweet. Oh, 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 what's wrong? What's wrong, baby? What's wrong, what happened? Yeah, he's just saying, don't eat me. Okay, I won't eat you. I'm gonna get a gig. Now them chickens right next to you, though. <laughs> Watch out. Come on, right there. Beautiful. When people eat the food from here, mm -hmm. what is their first reaction? It's uh, you know, one of one of uh, appreciation for the complexity of flavor. Uh, go to quicksip.com, and we have uh, uh, you can select products there, and you'll see everything from gaming monitors, uh, computer systems, as well as our different products. Take me home, stay out in the pool Like somehow place you can come if you want But we gotta get out of this place Cause they're at the close and they're sitting by the lake So take me home, where I wanna be Like somehow place you can come with me But tonight I'm gonna my phone Oh, they started going. Oh, they started going. Oh, they started going. Oh, they started going. 